Hey guys, Dr. Spinach here. In this video, we are going to be talking about osteomalacia. Now, if you remember, in, our, in my previous videos, we uh, were discussing about the first disease of the bone, that is the rickets. Now, uh, rickets and osteomalacia, both of them are defect in mineralization of the bone. If you remember, we discussed about this as well in mineralization of the bone, right? So if the mineralization is defective in children, we call it rickets. And if it is defective in adults, we call it osteomalacia. So how do we know when to call it rickets and when to call it osteomalacia? Now remember, when you're looking at an x-ray, when you're looking at an x-ray and you can clearly see the epiphysis, growth plate and metaphysis then whenever you see the growth plate we call it rickets so remember the rickets when growth plate is visible that means baby is still a baby so it is when we call it rickets okay now osteomalacia is when the growth plate is not visible growth plate is not there so whenever you see an x-ray of a baby or of any adult or anyone and you do not see the growth plate here this is epiphysis this is metaphysis but you do not see the growth plate then we call it osteomalacia so only differentiating feature between these two is the growth plate okay so a few things about osteomalacia is that it actually happens more in females than males and uh, um, how does it present well uh, a female usually a female and they are usually young young females so a young female actually can present to you with pain all over the body or all over the joints so polyarthralgia you will have bone pains not just not just joint pains but also bone pains she can also have uh, problems like uh, weakness in proximal muscles weakness in proximal muscles not the distal muscles we're talking about the proximal muscles here okay so this is how a patient is going to present to you now let's talk a little bit about so we have seen one difference between rickets and osteomalacia so if in exam how are you going to differentiate it you're going to look at the x-ray okay and you're going to check if the growth plate is present or not so let's check this x-ray and see some of the x-ray features of osteomalacia okay Okay, so in this, can you see a growth plate here? You cannot. You cannot see a growth plate. So there is no growth plate present here. Okay, so if there is no growth plate, what does it mean? This is not rickets. This is not a child's x-ray. This is an adult's x-ray. Now, can you see uh, a little bit of breach over here? Well, not exactly the breach, but can you see a defect over here, a lesion over here? Now, what is this lesion? What is this lesion in this long bone? Well, this lesion is known as loose loser's fracture. This lesion is known as loser's fracture and it is a pseudo fracture. Why is it called a pseudo fracture? Well, it is called a pseudo fracture because if you see here, the fracture is not complete. It only involves a little part of the bone. Plus, if you uh, can appreciate that there is al already a already a um, a white um, hyperdense uh, callus that is formed around this area over here. So this was the fracture actually. This was the fracture. And now already there has been callus formation to resolve, resolve the fracture, fragment. So what I'm sell, saying here is why is it called a pseudo fracture is, first reason is the patient is not aware of the fracture. Patient is not aware of the fracture, that it is a fracture, it doesn't really produce any kind of fracture symptoms or many kind of fracture symptoms. There might be pain, but it's not as painful as it should be in a fracture. Well, the function is kind of preserved. And also, uh, if you see here, it already started healing on its own. So you can see the callus formation. So this is milkman's loses or pseudo fracture. So and usually where will it be seen? It will be seen in the, it will be seen perpendicular to long bones. 
always perpendicular to long bone so this is a long bone it is perpendicular to long bone okay so this is the first extra feature which is seen in osteomalacia okay now the next thing in osteomalacia is what okay yeah one more thing here we also call it milkman's fracture okay we also call it milkman's fracture so remember milkman's fracture loser's fracture pseudo fracture all of this is actually uh, an x-ray finding for osteomalacia okay right now there is something uh, called as protrusio acetabuli so you can see here this is protrusio acetabuli or acetabuli whatever however you pronounce it okay so this is also a feature of what it is also a feature of osteomalacia so well i'm not taking the x-ray but normally in exams x-ray will be given to us and uh, you will uh, of basically the pelvis and you have to find that the acetabulum what is what does it mean acetabulum is protruding protrusio acetabuli means protruding at acetabulum now where is acetabulum protruding actually it is protruding inside the pelvis so we're going to draw um, a line and this is known as ilio ischial line so we're going to draw a line from ilium to ischium okay from ilium to ischium and then we're going to see that normally what should happen is normally this head should not cross this line so the head of the femur should not cross the ilio ischial line but when you see in the x-ray and you draw an ilio ischial line and you see that the head is crossing this line over here you can see the head is actually crossing this line here so this is actually protruding into the pelvis and therefore this is known as protrusio acetabuli and this is again another feature that is seen in osteomalacia okay and then well more or less there is one more feature that's a feature for spine and this is known as codfish vertebra where the vertebras look like look like a fish the cod fish vertebral appearance is seen in x-ray very characteristic and uh, this they will look uh, the vertebra would look like a cod fish something like this okay and well you don't have should not confuse cod fish vertebra to be seen in osteoporosis and osteomalacia what i'm trying to say is cod fish vertebra is both the feature of osteoporosis and osteomalacia we're going to discuss osteoporosis uh, later on in a while okay so ost but if both are in the options then you have to tick osteoporosis so it is seen more in osteoporosis than osteomalacia but definitely i'm not saying that it's not seen in osteomalacia it's also seen in osteomalacia okay so these are some of the things that we need to understand about osteomalacia and well why does this happen we all know why does this happen why does rickets happen well rickets happen because of deficiency of vitamin d so this is gonna also gonna happen due to deficiency of vitamin d the only difference is this happens in children this happens in adults okay so how gonna treat it then well simple give vitamin d right so give vitamin d so how are you going to give vitamin D? Well, you can give it either in one dose, you can give it weekly or you can give it daily. Okay. So whatever the patient prefers. So stat dose, you give three to six lakh international unit. Okay. And this can either be given intramuscularly or orally. Okay. And weekly, you can give 50 to 60,000 international units. And this is given over 8 to 12 weeks. So you call the patient until let's say, let's say 2 to 3 months is a good time. So until 3 months, you call the patient, okay, every week to give them 50 to 60K or you can just give them tablets which they can have, right? And daily, you can either give them daily as well, 2 to 5K for 4 to 6 weeks, okay? So this is the regimen that you have to follow for vitamin D. I'm not sure whether this is how much, how much important is this, but definitely the... Uh, the findings that we've seen in osteomalacia is very very important so thank you very much for watching this video and in the next video we're going to be talking about osteoporosis curvy and other um well bone diseases